cows that were selected for clinical examination based on health alerts from the colors and the um, and the milk uh, yield meters uh, had greater milk production, uh, especially in the first 21 days in milk. That is when the these two treatments were applied. Um, another interesting thing that we learned is that apparently selecting these cows uh, for ex for clinical exam based on the health alert, we were um, checking more cows, of course, because these cows were more likely to be selected for clinical examination. But also, uh, we believe that we were selecting these cows earlier. So the intervention was uh, conducted earlier, and we think that this helped the cows to uh, get better earlier as well. Good day and welcome to the Dairy Black Belt Podcast. And it is a pleasure today to have with us Dr. Clara Real, who is uh, connecting with us from Spain. Uh, good evening, Clara, how are you? Hello, Mark. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm good. Um, it's a real pleasure to connect with Clara here on, on the podcast. Um, I've gotten to know Clara very, very well over the years, uh, collaborating with, with her and, and the lab team at Cornell University and, and Julio Giordano's lab. Uh, Clara now comes from us in, in a new role, uh, working on a large dairy in Spain. Uh, but Clara, can you give us a little bit of uh, introduction and background uh, originally from uh, Argentina and, and how you made it to, to Cornell and, and uh, now to Spain? So I did um, my bed degree in Argentina. Uh, I graduated in in La Pampa, a province in the middle of Argentina. So then I was interested in health and health uh, management, of, especially in dairy farms, but I was open to anything. So I went to do um, a residency in animal health in Argentina as well, in Balcarce. Uh, that is the, an institute of Argentina that um, do all the, the research, like the farm research or agricultural sector region, uh, region research. Uh, and after that residency, uh, I contacted with a professor in my university and told him that I was looking at an opportunity outside of Argentina. Uh, my idea was to kind of have an experience abroad and then go back and start working at the farm. But that that's not what happened. So then I went to, to Cornell to work with Julio Giordano. I started an internship there. My plan was to do one year internship and then go back to Argentina. Uh, so Julio offered me after one year uh, working with him, he offered me a PhD. Actually he offered me a master first and then I went for a PhD. And during that PhD, I work a lot with sensor data and how to use different monitoring uh, strategies for health in dairy farms. Um, and yes, then I, because of love reasons, I end up in, in Spain. And now I work in a dairy farm here as a manager of the reading uh, heifers section. So yes, uh, a big change, but a really nice learning experience. Wisenetics turns podcast airtime into brand authority. We don't sell ads, we elevate voices. Curious how far your voice can go to become a reference in the industry and attract more leads? Scan the QR code and discover how we can turn your expertise into unmatched brand authority. Let's transform expertise into influence, starting now. So great, and, and we'll visit a little bit more, <clears throat> Clara, about your experiences on the farm, because I think that's a super cool transition from your very practical veterinary experience and, and time in Argentina, and then research uh, in New York at Cornell, but a lot of practical research, correct? You know, working on the dairies and then now, you know, boots on the ground on the dairy. So, you know, we really got to work together closely on, on a health monitoring project um, that's uh, now been published in, in Journal of Dairy Science. But tell us a bit about that project. And I think the results are not only really interesting, but super relevant as 
people start to use activity monitoring, not only for heat detection, but all the other ways we can implement these technologies. Yes. So it was a, a really nice project. We learned a lot. We checked a lot of calls. It was a really interesting um, project. But what the first thing that we learned from that project is that uh, we can actually have benefits from sensors when we are comparing the use of these technologies uh, with the use of visual observation to select out for clinical examination that we know that nowadays is one of the most uh, used practices to select cows for health checks. Uh, and we actually observe a benefit on milk yield um, selected for clinical examination based on health alerts from the colors and the, um, and the milk uh, yield meters. Uh, had greater milk production, uh, especially in the first 21 days in milk, that is when the these two treatments were applied. Um, another interesting thing that we learned is that apparently selecting these cows uh, for ex for clinical exam based on the health alert, we were um, taking more cows, of course, because these cows were more likely to be selected for clinical examination. But also, uh, we believe that we were selecting these cows earlier. So the intervention was uh, conducted earlier, and we think that this helped the cows to uh, get better earlier as well. Um, and yeah, so these cows ended up being uh, less likely to be sold when we compare them with the visual observation group. And um, again, the milk yield was greater. Uh, so it was nice, a nice project. And this was conducted on a farm commercial dairy farm. So only only one site, obviously, which is a bit of the limitation of the trial, but um, really a well-experienced crew, fresh cow crew, if you will, who in our experience, right, are, are really good at finding cows in need. Would you agree? Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, I think people that are at the farm every day with the cows, those are the best ones to compare the sensors with. They, they had a lot of experience. And Clara, so I know, you know, f from our experience working there together, you, you examined every one of those cows to find something. <clears throat> Can you talk a little bit about the cows that have alerts, but a veterinary exam and, and fairly complete uh, doesn't find any clinical disease, or at least the clinical diseases that we can easily detect, metritis, mastitis, pneumonia, ketosis, et cetera. So can you comment a little bit on those cows that they have an alert? Something's quote wrong, but at least it, an experienced veterinarian is not finding anything real obvious. Yeah, so that, that was an interesting group to find. So at the at the end of the trial, we ended up with uh, this group of cows that, as you, as you mentioned, they, they had an alert, they were checked, they were followed every other day during the, the, the alert sessions, and we couldn't find anything to those cows. And we, we actually uh, observed that these cows are behaving differently. So we ran a, a sampling in a subset of... of this kind of like in groups that were representing these uh, cows and we compare them with cows with an alert and a clinical um, diagnosis and we couldn't find anything. So these cows were like um, immunologically and metabolically, I don't know if that, those are words, but similar to cows that were completely healthy without an alert, but still they were producing less milk and they were behaving differently. They had lower rumination, they had lower activity when compared with these healthy and no alert cows. But when we compare them with the uh, sick cows that had an alert, these cows were doing better. So they were kind of in between the, the good cows and the bad cows, right? But we couldn't find anything that could guide, uh, guide us on what is going on with these cows. So they are a mystery for us now. They're a mystery cow um, uh, and sounds like a great opportunity for another research project, right? What, what, what do we do with these cows? Because certainly there are lots of folks who want to give these cows some probiotics or a calcium bolus or, you know, we need to do something with them. And I guess um, that's probably a question for another research project, correct? Yes, <laughs> that, that was the next 
the next step, but I'd run away. <laughs> I think the really the, the conclusion here is that um, activity monitoring, as, as, as we know, especially systems now that are you know giving us far more data on panting activity, uh, ruminations, et cetera, respirations can provide far, far more than just heat detection, re repro based, uh, uh, you know, benefits and how to really fine tune that on each individual farm, right. Of not having a list that's, uh, not, you know, you're not capable of examining all those cows in a day, but also not missing those cases that, that we do need to find. Correct. Yes. Yes. Correct. We we still have a lot to learn, though, from the sensors and how to use this data not only to uh, select cows for clinical examination, but also uh, maybe I don't know, um, knowing the prognosis of a health disorder, knowing if the treatment is going somewhere or not, if the cow is getting better or not. Like I think we have a lot to learn from sensors and how to use them on a daily farm uh, on a daily basis to. To kind of improve the the usage that we have for these sensors today. So Clara, look forward to having you back sometime soon to talk about now, given your research, um, how on the dairy you're implementing that kind of boots on the ground. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Uh, thanks for everybody. Um, this is Mark Thomas signing off and uh, thank you so much, Dr. Clara Riel, for joining us today.